All right, so let's create our first visualization with Flourish. Let's begin with something simple, such as a world map with um, data from just one year, right? From the year 2012. If you remember, we had one data set called Gapminder 2012, and these are several world indicators um, from that year, country by country and continent by continent. So I'm going to go to Flourish. I'm going to click on New Visualization. And when the shelf with all the uh, visualizations available here shows up, I am going to select Map the World. All right, so this is going to appear over here. You will see um, it takes a little bit to load all the, all the thumbnails. I'm going to click here on Map the World, and let's create a world map with a couple of a couple of options, we are going to visualize, for example, uh, as I showed you in the original, uh, in the first video of this series, I showed you an example that showed you fertility rate, children per woman, and then life expectancy. So two maps uh, side by side. Okay, children per woman and life expectancy. So let's create something similar to that. Now, as I said before, in the previous video, whenever you load a new template uh, in Flourish, that template will come with a specific um, a data, right? With pre-existing data. Uh, while the map loads, let's take a look at the at the right shelf over here. So the basic interface in Flores is that up here you have the preview of the map and then you can access the data over here, right? This is the pre-existing data. We're going to change that in one minute. And as you can see, when you're going to create a map in Flourish, it lets you create both color maps, all right? So you can load data that, that, that is connected to the colors of the regions of the map, or you can use point data, right? So you can see here, for example, that we have data from different cities in the in the world. Let's take a look at the data first before we, we change it, because we are going to remove some of this data. So if you click on data, you will have, you will have access to the two spreadsheets that the data comes from. So first of all, you have shading data, which is the data that has been used by Flourish to color the regions of the map. And then you have points data. The points data, if you are going to use point data for some reason, if you want to create a bubble map, for example, you will need latitudes and longitudes okay, in your data set. So Flourish will know where to uh, place all these bubbles. This is something that we will do later with the county level map of the United States. But for now, we are not going to do that. We are going to limit ourselves just to shading data. Therefore, what I'm going to do is to go back to preview up here, preview, let's go back to the map. And I'm going to change a couple of things over here. Now, this here is the interface that lets you change the uh, appearance of the map. So first of all, you have appearance, so you can change the background color if you want. Zoom is on by default, so you can zoom in. By the way, the, the interactive map also has a search box. So if I go here, and this will be shown when you export the map to be published. So if I want to look for your own country, for my own country, Spain, I can just click here and Spain will be highlighted on the map, okay? Um, so we can change the appearance, we can change the border color, we can change the border highlight. We're not going to do any of that, but if you wanted, for example, to change the border color to, I don't know, blue or whatever, you could do that if you want. That's not a great idea, so I'm not going to do it, okay? Now, shading is the part that con that that, that a, a controls how the different regions of the map will be shaded. So we are going to keep these on, because that's what we want. And then points, we don't want points data, right? So we are going to disable points data. I'm going to go over here and disable points data. And even if I have data on the points data Excel sheet over here, that data here will not be shown if I disable, disable that, right? So let's do that. And now let's go to the data a, a, a section over here and let's up, upload our own data to the shading data section. So let's import our data. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to select Gapminer 2012, so that is data for just one year. I'm going to click on Open, Import, and Overwrite the current sheet. I'm going to click on Import, and now it tells you, next, select the columns, all right? So this gives you some hint of how, what to do next. All right, so here's how um, a Flourish maps data onto the map. So well, first of all, even if you are on the data section, a Flourish will give you a little bit of a preview of what happens on the map. Right now, for example, Flourish doesn't know where to find the different regions or what to show. Well, it, it does know how to, where to find the different regions, but it doesn't know what to show, what values you want to show, right? So let's take a look at this part over here where, they say, where it says shading. The first thing that you need to tell Flourish is what column of your data set contains the region names? Right? On my data set, fortunately, it's the first column, but it could be the second column or the third column that contains the region's names. Okay? So, for example, if I had the country names on column C, 
over here, I will need to write C to tell Forrest where to find the country names. But in my case, it's column A, right? They are already there. Now, the values that you want to map. Let's suppose, for example, that you want to create a map of fertility rates, okay? Children per woman in 2012. That will be column G on your data set, right? So that's the one that I'm highlighting, right? But Flores doesn't let you select by highlighting things. You need to type things, okay? So I'm going to go to values here. I'm going to click here, right, to make that. And I'm going to change that. I'm going to erase B, and I'm going to write G instead, right? And let's take a look at what happens when I click out. The data will be loaded on the map, right? It will take a little bit, but the map will be, will load it. There we go, right? So I could go back to the preview to see how the map looks like. And as you can see, the darker the color, the higher the number of children per woman on each one of these countries. Okay. Now, the size of a map, of a map or any graphic that you create in Flourish can be changed. Okay. By default, it's going to show the preview using the available width. But you can make these typical tablet width. You can make it typical mobile width. All right. So it's going to change that. Or you can use a custom size. Right. So I'm, I'm going to just go back over here. So remember that you can switch back and forth between these options. And then you can click here and change these to, if you want it to be a little bit smaller, 900, for example, it's going to make it a little bit smaller if you want to fit the map a little bit better on the window. Now, you will see that in, in general, when you create maps in Flourish, Flourish is going to use a continuous color scheme, right? So this is a continuous color scheme. So it's like a gradient, right? But you can change that. And this is something that we are going to play with later on in, a, in another video. So I could go, for example, to Shading Legend. <clears throat> Sorry, well, the shading legend is not the one that lets you control the color. We'll get to that. But this is just to, for you to see that you can hide and show the legend okay, if you want to. You can change the legend type, all right? So you can customize it if you want. You can change the text size of the legend. For example, I can make it enormous if I want. All right, so you can change that. You can change the color of the text. So you can put the legend at the bottom if you want, instead of on top. You can put it on top or at the bottom, okay? Whatever you prefer. And then um, the shading part is the one that lets you change the color scheme. Let's suppose that you don't want a continuous color scheme. By the way, before I get to that, notice something that is really cool about this. If I hover over any of the countries here, notice how a little circle appears on the gradient above telling you where that country stands on the distribution, on the overall distribution of the data. So if I put Niger, Niger over here, or Niger over here, you will see that's eight, all right? So it's close to the eight part of the of the gradient. Now, you can, here's where you can change, as I said before, the, um, the color scheme. You can use a sequential color scheme. You can use a diverging color scheme, all right? So this sort of the average, so below average, above the above the average from all over the world, right? And you can change the color. So here you can you have the different color schemes that you can that you can use. That's not a great idea, but let's use that one for example. You can also reverse the colors, right? So for example if you want to switch the colors, right? So for example in this case green will be lower, right? Rather than being more, right? You can change that. Uh, let's go back to sequential which is the one that I want to use. The other thing that you can pay attention to is the, this option here. Here it says, use a continuous color scale, mean using a gradient. Let's turn that off and let's change these um, to number of buckets, right? So this, let, let's bucket these out, right? Let's say that you want, for example, four buckets. The first one going from one to two, the second one going from two to three, etc. So let's say that you want four buckets. And here you tell the software which thresholds you want to use. You will see that automatically will create thresholds for you, but you can customize them. For example, you can say we have well, how many thresholds we have. We have one, two, three, four, five. We could say, for instance, the first is one, the second one is going to be five, the second one is going to be six, the third one is going to be seven, and it's going to be eight, right? And automatically you will see that the different, th this is not a great color scheme, obviously, but this is just to illustrate that you can change the thresholds at will, right? And the nice thing about, about using thresholds is that automatically the legend of the map, the size of each one of the buckets of the, of the beans that you're using, the size will change according to how many observations, how many countries you have within that bean. So you can see that a lot of countries have between one and five children, and much fewer countries have between five and eight children. Okay, so this sort, so this works sort, sort of a, of a, of a graphic that lets you see the distribution of the data. Right. So this is a no. It's a it's a lot of fun to play with. I can change that and use three, for example. Right. If you want to highlight or one and two. Right, there you go. So just remember that you can use either continuous or non-continuous color schemes.